Shalom. So first and foremost, bet no, bet not nobody looking right at the damn camera asks me why the fuck I'm wearing shades. It should be very fucking obvious why I'm wearing shades right now. But um, anyway, this is Yeshaya back at you with another car chronicle. I swear, like I've recorded like ten videos this week already, and it's only what Wednesday. It's Wednesday, and I deleted all of them because. You know, I always tell y'all, like, I'm very critical of my own videos. But this one is very important because one thing that, uh, one thing that I've noticed about Israel since I came in this truth is that, um, <clears throat> it, it, when, when I first came here, part of what attracted me to the truth was the, um, kind of, alternative to Christianity, right? Oh shit, my music is a little too loud, so like, you know, we, it, it was an alternative to Christianity and I knew Christianity was full of shit, but something drew me to the scriptures, the way brothers was bringing it out and brother, the way brothers was, was explaining things, you know what I mean? And, uh, so like, and you know just 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 very you know to the by the book but in, in in a militant fashion and i was in that militant stage of my life at the time so you know then as i grew up in the faith i'm sitting here looking at what we're doing right and the way we practice the truth and, and, and just the way we are towards one another. And I realized, you know, there is a lot missing from the message here. And I think that what the reason why it's missing from the message is because we kind of know it from Christianity, you know, but we can't assume that everybody was in Christianity before they came into the faith. You know, we don't, we don't teach a lot of mercy. We don't teach the love like that. You know what I mean? We don't teach the, uh, the upliftment part to the scriptures. We teach the truth. We teach the prophecy. We teach the the judgment. You know, but we don't we don't go into a whole lot of um, it's a lot because these freaking retards over here don't know how to drive. But uh, you know, we we don't we we we. We lack in a lot of the, uh, I don't want to say soft, because to be honest with you, me being on this earth 43 years, forgiveness and mercy is actually harder than to, than to beat somebody ass. It really is. Shaking hands with somebody that you really want to beat the fuck out of. Like literally one of my friends in the world that I had a falling out with, I ran into him at a house party one time. And I wasn't going to say shit to him. He came to me and shook my hand. I wanted to fuck him up, but I shook his hand. You know what I'm saying? That goes to show, you know, uh, the, um, I don't know. Um, that just goes, because uh, I don't want to make it sound like I'm propping myself up. That's really the Lord working through me. You know, giving me that spirit of, of, of not wanting to be violent. Because it actually is harder to be that way. It's really harder to have the world wrong you and you not wrong, wrong them back. It's difficult, man. It's not easy. And when I say the world, I'm not just talking about people in the world. I'm talking about people in Israel. People, period. You know, we grew up on beating people ass when they fuck you over or when they do something wrong to you. You know, it's not it's not a normal thing to to say, you know what, brother, I forgive you. And matter of fact, that same nigga brother, I had a falling out with his brother too. Totally unrelated. And I ran into his brother. His brother works for Amazon. And I just saw an Amazon driver, and the Amazon driver asked me what's the what's the address of the building that I'm standing in front of. It was my building where I live at. So I told him the address and I was like, You want me to let you in? So he's like, yeah. 
And as he walked up, I realized it was it was his brother. So I let him in. We didn't really talk much. I said, what up, whatever. He came outside and he started like like profusely, not, not on some scared shit, but really apologizing for, you know, because the, you know, the falling out we had was his fault and he knows it. And he literally said it was my fault. You know what I mean? And, you know, I, I didn't even have before he apologized. I didn't I, I didn't have the spirit of violence on me. You know what I'm saying? You know, because you grow up out of this shit. You realize, like, listen, I'm 43 years old. I'm not beating niggas asses like I used to. You know what I'm saying? You know, at this point with cameras everywhere, I pull a gun on somebody. They're going to fuck. It's going to be I'll, I'll be the dumb motherfucker that they'll make an example out of. Oh, a ring camera caught this guy pulling a, you know, whatever, you know what I'm saying? You know, so it's simpler to just forgive in more ways than one. Like it actually, it's simpler, but in, deep down inside it's difficult sometimes because your pride and your ego makes you want to fuck somebody up. Like you're not going to get away with doing that shit and think you, you, you just going to be walking the street safely. You know what I mean? Like you need to feel that there's some type of fucking consequences for your actions. You know, but when you mature in the spirit, you know, you learn that that's not sustainable. You better off forgiving because if the, if you forgive, but then the Lord says, nah, hold up. I don't like what he did and the Lord might get him anyway. You know, but when, when, when you forgive, you, you put the person's destiny, not in your hands, but in the hands of the Lord. And you're really tougher because you have to confide that the Lord is either going to punish this person or they're going to take your forgiveness as you're forgiven. You're good. Because when you forgive somebody, don't still hope that the Lord does something to them. You know, that's not that's not, you know, but basically the main point of the video that I'm that I'm doing is, you know, this is this is growth. One oh one with the scriptures. You know, you learn to actually look at things from a spiritual eye and you realize Christianity was not wrong when it taught mercy. It's just who to have mercy to towards who are God's people. You know what I mean? That's what Christianity doesn't teach. But having mercy is nothing wrong. It's not, you know, a bad thing. I remember one time a brother like there was a council. I'm not going to tell you what church it was part of. It's not the one I'm part of now. But it was a church council and, and one brother was like, what do you think this is, a love fest? And it's a brother y'all know too, those, you know, brothers that go back to the old school. And then, you know, later on it got me thinking, why why, why ain't it a love fest? Why don't we love one another? Like, why is the love of one another not pushed? And then we wonder why we go out in the streets and people think that we are a hate group. People look at us like we incite violence. We get investigated when somebody that has nothing to do with any Israelite church that I know of uh, shoots at Jewish people in Jersey City. And the reason is because we don't we we don't push concepts that Christianity pushes because they appear to soften our point. And they don't. They don't. Love your people uh, separate from the other people and that's it separate don't hurt don't don't attack you know just separate from them you know it's not it's not an alien concept in this truth to this truth you know but what happens is we're afraid to push the word love we're we're, we're afraid to tell our brothers we love them Right, because that's some Christian shit, and I get it. You know, because when if you if somebody if a man tell you I love you in in the Christian church, you gotta wonder if the nigga wanna fuck you, right? Because they they tolerate all types of wickedness and, and stuff. I get that, but we brothers in the faith that are that are that are hardened by the by the spirit of the Lord, but towards one another. Remember, the scripture said that we were uh we were tender towards one another. And delicate in the way we, we, we dealt with brothers You know, because brothers like to 
yell at each other and, and correction and rebuke always has to come in the form of a of a disparaging comment you don't have to talk down to a brother to, to rebuke him you know you could ask you know brothers in my church when when have you ever been talked down to when's the last time that somebody actually talked down to you in this church because we don't practice that here you know we rebuke each other the way we want to be rebuked you know and if we go off yeah you know we, we do check brothers for going off don't get it twisted if a brother do some bullshit we check them but we got to remember at the end of the day we're talking to men you know what i'm saying we're talking to men I'm not talking to little kids we're talking to grown-ass men you know the same decorum that that i want when somebody t has to tell me i fucked up i have for other brothers because it's funny it's really funny Israelites, we not the only ones that do this shit, but this is a thing of the world, and we got to stop this. We have to stop this bad habit of rebuking the shit out of everybody else. But when it comes down to checking yourself, then that's a problem. See, Yahawashai, if we if we want to be like Yahawashai, Yahawashai didn't go around and shit on the sinners. He sat with them. He broke bread with them. It was them fucking hypocrites. It was them high horse ass people. The judgmental people. The people that were quick to, to wish death on people. You know, the ones that, that were pompous. That's who Yahweh Shai um, really destroyed. Not just rebuke, he destroyed their ass. Because he let them have it. He let them know, listen, you ain't no better than nobody for you to be sitting here judging people. Did he not say, he who's without sin cast the first stone? Now, that was a literal thing. That woman was about to get stoned, literally. But we understand the scriptures. You know, because the thing is, a lot, a lot of a lot of brothers in this faith, one thing I notice is we we have all we have a lot of knowledge. And even outsiders looking in can look at us and say, oh, these guys know the scriptures. These guys know the Bible really good. The issue has never been with us knowing. The issue is you know, we lack in wisdom and understanding. Because when you, when you when you are wiser and you understand more, you judge less cuz you realize I fuck up too. I have fucked up and I can possibly fuck up again. Lord, keep me from fucking up. That's really pretty much what we should be hoping for. You know, but a lot of men don't do that. They they have a spirit of, I can do no wrong. We got to get that shit out of Israel, man. We got to stop judging on a high horse. We have to start, judging is not wrong. The scriptures tell you, he that is spiritual judgeth all things, but we forget the first part of that scripture. He that is spiritual. Because we link that up with the law of Moses and say the law, the law is spiritual. Which it is. But how many of you are actually keeping the law? You know what I'm saying? So we we have to take things into consideration. Take ourselves, our own actions, our own flaws into consideration when we judge others. Because well, while you pointing fingers, remember the, 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 the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom. The Lord ain't just watching the white man. The Lord is watching more, more us than anybody else. If we his chosen people, then the Lord looks at us when we judge and we look at other things, you know, like, like, like when you walk, like, like when you at camp and you calling uh, a dude that, that might have a little feminine inflection in his voice and, oh, you a faggot, blah, blah, blah. The Lord look at you like, nigga, you a adulterer. 
You know, the Lord look at you and be like, bro, you ain't perfect neither. You know, that's why we're like, like, like now if a, if a guy comes to, comes by the camp and listens and, and, you know, and, and he's a little feminine and shit, I'm not, I, I'm, I will address that the Lord doesn't want us to be that way, you know, but there's going to be compassion in, in, in my delivery and there's going to be understanding, you know, because at the end of the day, I don't know how he was brought up. You know, he could have been brought up in a, in a, in a single parent household with his mother. And, and obviously, you know, you can't expect a woman to teach a, a, a young man fem, uh, masculinity, you know? And then a lot of us, we also judge those situations and say, oh, you probably ran your, your baby father off. Some women, there are a lot of women that I know that that's not the circumstance. A lot of it, not a lot, I'd say a good half, okay, I'd say a good 25% of the women that are single mothers that I know um, are good people. And they have been done wrong legit wrong like you can't say shit wrong you know a man came offering them the world and broke the fuck off uh you know because it does happen it does happen you do have ain't shit dudes making these women fall in love and then fucking laughing about it you know what i'm saying and, and i'm sorry a lot of you dudes in the truth are, are the same exact way. You do not mind breaking women's hearts and shit until then you have a daughter you or, or, or you look at or you want to protect your sister. And, and it's crazy, man. Some some of the I've seen some dudes that will fuck anything. But then when when somebody talks to their sister, stay away from my sister. Oh, but you was out there fucking everything and still are. But you want somebody to stay away. From, so your sister is special but all these other women that you smashing and dashing you know what I'm saying is not uh, special or worthy like your sister huh you know we, we have to we have to really check ourselves in this faith man because listen we, we're not all these other religions have thousands of years of a head start on us because we totally lost Like we, we we were down to like You know the Lord always reserved himself 7,000 men who have not bowed down The need to bail out But as an organization as, a, as an organized group Israelites are very new We, we you know we, we don't have Countries like Islam We don't have countries like Christianity You know what I'm saying We, we have to Understand that we are a nation and a faith within other nations. So the things that they check each other on and the culture that they have, we have to start in, in, in for, not enforcing, but really, yeah, enforcing. We need to start teaching and pushing, you know, the wisdom and understanding aspect of the Bible. You know, there's nothing wrong. You know, there's nothing unscriptural about having mercy and having compassion and and forgiving you know we gotta we gotta take it upon ourselves to to teach that because the scriptures say it this is that we stay away from those scriptures because we think that we're gonna sound like fucking christians i get it i don't want to sound like a christian either but i'm i'm, I'm here on this video pushing Mercy, compassion, love, and I, I really don't think I sound like a Christian. In fact, a Christian would be like, why, why the fuck he curse so much? It's passion and curse. A curse isn't a curse word, by the way. We can get into that on another topic, but there's no such thing as curse words. I do try to refrain from it as best I can because, you know, there are people that would be turned off by it, you know, but there are people that'll be like, yo, he's teaching the word and, you know, and he's, you know, he's coming with it raw, you know what I mean? So, you know, different, different people get attracted by different things. That's why the scriptures say rightly dividing the word of truth. 
you know, and, and, and also, you know, the Lord said he's going to make us fishers of men. So fishers of men, when you fish, you know how to throw out the right bait. Certain fit, like if you, like if you are going after a fish that gets it, that's attracted to the color blue, and I'm just making up shit. But let's say there's a fish that's attracted to the color blue. Am I going to throw a purple bait to it? Or am I going to throw something blue? You know what I mean? So we, we have to, you know, we have to do that, man. We have to. What the hell? What are these re-re's beeping at? But anyway. But uh, but yeah, that's my rant for the day, Israel. You know, um, we we have to we have to put the love back in this thing. We have to put the mercy and the compassion back in this thing. Because, you know, what what did what did Paul say in Romans 9 and 1? I wish that uh, I'm paraphrasing, of course, that I myself could be a curse from Christ for my brethren. He was moved with compassion. He his, his, his heart bled for his people. You know, we have to look at our people. Like you see, and, 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 and it's funny, my girl checked me on this last week because we got on the train and it was a dude that was stink. And everybody was kind of clowning him, but you know, so I, I, my goofy ass was kind of clowning, you know, just between me and her. It wasn't like I was out there clowning him, you know, at him, you know what I mean? But, you know, she had to tell me like, like you, you do know you're a couple paychecks away from him, right? And I had to sit back and think, you know, cause at the end of the day, anybody that knows me knows that I have soaked out the wazoo. I don't know what the fuck a wazoo is, but anyway. And then I had to think about it like, yo, you know what? You right. You know what I'm saying? You know, I was I was I was a little too into the clowning, the joking. To to stop and think like, yo, this could be me. You know, um but yeah. It, it, it like like we have to and this was an Edomite by the way, so um Or, or at least I believe he was an Edomite. So, not likely my people, but at the same time, still shouldn't be, you know, like, yeah, he, he stink, you know. But it's not a, it, when you really look at the situation, it's not a funny matter. You know, I'm sure this person had, had a life, had a, you know, may have had, you know, graduated high school. He was somebody's bundle of joy when he was a baby, and now... He's sitting here sleeping on a path train homeless. You know, you got to have compassion. And it's not a, and it doesn't make you out to be a Christian. Just because you have compassion doesn't mean you celebrate Christmas, AKA Babylon day. Just because you have compassion and love for your people does not mean that you, uh, what you call it, that you celebrate Easter. Right? It doesn't mean that you worship a pagan god. You know, it, it, it means that you are following the scriptures. So with that, I'm going to say Shalom.